special recording. General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, present The Lone Ranger. And the haughty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. get discouraged if you keep in mind champions are made, not born. Let's see how Tom Sears, past catching end for the Los Angeles Rams, got on his way. At 12, Tom played football a lot, and many a bump is what he got, but he kept trying, never quit. And here's what helped to keep him fit. He ate his Wheaties every bit. The day Tom sparks those touchdown drives, it's Wheaties still on which he thrives. Wheaties to Sears, there's a past combination that's been clicking steady now for 19 years. Real energy in Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Okay, Tom, snag that pass. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Even after her marriage to a wealthy eastern lawyer named Homer Potts, the buxom landlady of the Henry House in Modoc City was still affectionately known as Ma Hank. Though Ma had acquired a husband, she continued to run the hotel, and as always, she permitted no one else to prepare the food she served in her dining room. It was almost 9.30, and though the day's chores were ended, Ma was still in the big lamplit hotel kitchen during the baking for the next day's meals. As she took two deliciously fragrant apple pies from the oven, the kitchen door opened. Howdy, Ma. Inky. Her caller was a 14-year-old boy named Inky. Ma had a warm spot in her heart for the thin, freckle-faced orphan who had been adopted by the newspaper editor several years ago. The mischievous, fun-loving boy was a hopeless prankster, but Ma was always glad to see him. I brought you two dozen of tomorrow's papers. Shall I put them in the front lobby? No, just leave them on the table for the time being. Right. Nice. I'll put them out front in the morning. Tom's wife and I got the paper out. Tom set the type before he left town. Oh, oh. Why did he leave town? He went with Marshal Jim Frazier to help guide the gold shipment Wells Fargo was bringing into the local office. Oh, I heard Marshal Jim took a couple of fellas with him to help him do the garden. Ma, will you be using your horse tonight or tomorrow? For me for it? No, why? Well, I wondered if you'd lend to me. What for? To go after Tom and Marshall Young. Uh, It'll be doggone exciting helping guard that gold. If Tom wanted you to go along, he'd have taken you. Oh. Besides, you have work to do here. I've done the work. I got the paper out, and I haven't a thing to do for the next couple of days. I'd have to answer to Tom if I let you risk your neck. I'll explain to Tom. He doesn't understand. No. Come on in. The door's not locked. Ma, will you think it over? I promise you I'll be mighty careful. Inky, you might as well forget about it. Mrs. Potter. 
great sakes alive, look who it is. The one who ain't playing Tonto. Oh, my. Oh, come in, come in, both of you. My land, I'm glad to see you. It's good to see you, too. Hello, Inky. How are you? Fine, mister. Did you bring Dan to town? No, Dan's in school in the east. Oh, I wish I'd known the name of his school. I'd have told Homer to call on the lad. Oh, is Uncle Homer in the east? He left for New York this morning. Sit down and make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Uh, what brought you here? An outlaw named Spence Burrow. Never heard of the critter. He's well known in Missouri and Arkansas. Ah. Uh, he wanted there for robbery and murder. I wonder what would bring a crook like him to town unless... Great sakes alive. Yes? What's wrong? I wonder if he's come here to get the gold Wells Fargo will be holding in town. What gold? Here, mister. Take a look at the front page of this paper ink he brought. That article there tells about it. Marshal Jim's gone to Big Rock to help guard the shipment on its way here. Hmm. According to this article, the gold will be held at the local Wells Fargo office for two days. Uh huh, that's right. Then it'll go out on the train to the Denver Mint to be made into coin. My, I told you there'd be some excitement over that gold. You hush, Inky. What's your opinion, mister? Well, it'd take more than one man to steal that gold shipment. Maybe Spence Burrow has a partner. But uh, he was traveling alone. Oh. Well, in that case, I reckon I was wrong. He probably doesn't even know about the gold. If he's in town and reads the paper, he'll know about it. Tyler, I hope to talk to Marshal Fraser about Burrow. The Marshal will be back in a few days, but he's deputy in town. Then we'll warn him. Leaving the Lone Ranger and Tato in Ma Hank's kitchen, Inky went out the back door. Several yards away was the big hotel stable. And as he slowly approached it, Inky thought sadly of the gold shipment. Just man, locked the mist out in the front of guarding all that gold. Inky's steps dragged as he passed the stable window. God, the Lone Ranger left silver in there. I'm going in to see him. Lifting the bolt on the stable door, Inky went inside. Moonlight, flapping through the windows, shone on the Lone Ranger's mighty stallion. Golly! The boy moved to Silver's side and was thrilled when the horse whinnied recognition. Golly, you remember me, Silver. I'll bet you've helped capture a lot of outlaws since I saw you last. I'd be helping capture some myself right now if I had a horse. In the next stall, Inky saw Uncle Homer's handsome black. He crossed to Blackie's stall. Blackie, old boy, I'd like to take you out of here. The big black tossed his head and pawed the floor of the stable. You'd like to go with me, wouldn't you, fella? Then Inky saw Uncle Homer's saddle hanging on the wall. Oh, God. The sight of the saddle so near at hand was the last straw. Temptation was too great for Inky. He decided to borrow the powerful black stallion without Mar's permission. He was taking Blackie's saddle from the rack when he heard the voices of two men approaching the stable. Afraid of being caught there, Inky sought a hiding place. One of the voices Inky heard belonged to Spence Burrow, the man the Lone Ranger and Tato had been trailing. The other man was a cafe owner named Clyde Roscoe. As they entered the stable, Spence Burrow said, That masked man and his Indian pal have been following me. They've been dogging my trail for a long time. You're a loco, Spence. When I wired you to come and join up with me, I figured you were the gunslinging gent you used to be. Instead of that, your nerves have turned to fiddle strings. You keep jawing about the Lone Ranger and Tonto being on your trail. Well, they are. If you've lost your nerve, say so. Don't use that masked man for a dodge. I'll show you something that'll make you lose your nerve. Come on, take a look inside that stall. Yeah. What about it? See that big white stallion? Yeah. Well, his name's Silver. Silver? Yeah. He's the Lone Ranger. What is horse? How'd you know he was here? I was heading for your place by way of the back alley so as no one would see me when I spotted the masked man and the engine. Were they traveling through the alleys too? Yeah, I reckon the Lone Ranger didn't want anyone to see him in his mask. Oh. Well, I followed him. They stopped at the marshal's office, but the place was dark, and they found that the back door was locked. Then they came here, left the horses in the stable, and headed for the back door of the hotel. That's when I went to get you. Oh, I'm glad to know that masked man's in town. Well, that's the reason I can't help you get the gold, Clyde. You'll have to hide me in your place till he and the engine are away from here. We have no way of knowing how soon he'll leave. I'm not showing myself until he's gone. Now hold on, Spence. We've a chance to grab a fortune. 
Enough to put us in easy street for the rest of our lives. You'd be smart to forget that gold. Clyde, you're in the clear now. Take my advice and stay that way. With the masked man and the red skin around here, you haven't a chance. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. This is Mel Allen, sports announcer. In my work, I watch a good many champions. And you know something? I've never yet heard of a player born a champion. You take the case of Dope Walker, star ball carrier of the professional Detroit Lions. Walker gets started fast, cuts back with ease, has a terrific change of pace. Every move comes from hours and weeks and seasons of practice. In my opinion, it's important, too, that Dope Walker has been eating Wheaties for 18 years, since he was 9 years old. Sure. Breakfast of champions. And that's mighty easy to understand, I'd say. Wheaties are a he-man food. They help give a guy what it takes to get there and stay there and keep plugging. Naturally. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Now look, maybe you tip the scales at 190, or maybe you're just a little guy dead set to get on your way. All right? Bear in mind, champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Now to continue. Crouching in Blackie's stall, Inky listened with loving excitement to the conversation of Spence Burrow and Clyde Roscoe. Ever since he reached his place of concealment, he'd been stifling a desire to sneeze. Trying desperately to control the impulse, he wished the two men would leave so he could report what he'd overheard to the Lone Ranger. How do you know? He's a friend of mine. I heard him telling Ma Hank about Spence Burrow. You know what heard too much for your own good? We've got to get rid of this youngster, Clyde. I have a shack on Thief River, Spence. We'll take him there. Put that rope on him. Right. The Lone Ranger will follow you to the shack. Then he'll capture both of you. You can't get away from him. Oh, Phil. Yeah, he's right, Clyde. That masked man was smart enough to follow me to Modoc City. And trail enough to your shack would be easy for him. In that case, we'll have to get rid of the Lone Ranger. There. Yeah? Well, I know a lot of fellows who tried that. We'll do it the easy way. What do you mean? We'll leave track so he'll be sure to follow us to my place. 
There are a couple of big flat top rocks in the river about 30 feet from my shack. We'll put Inky on the rocks and leave him there. To rescue him, the masked man will have to take off his guns and swim to the rocks. Hey. Without his guns, the Lone Ranger will be as helpless as a crippled duck. We'll open fire on him while he's in the water. That's a good idea, Clyde, and it might work. It has to work. I don't plan to let that gent send me to jail. You gag the boy while I get my buckboard set for travel. Then bring him to the saddle shed and we'll head for the shack. <laughs> kitchen with the Lone Ranger and Tato. The big landlady here was walking with them to the stable where they left their horses. Reaching the stable, Tato saw the open door. That might be strange. Wonder who leave door open. Uh-huh. Someone took Blackie's saddle from the rack. If you were match, I'll get the lantern and take a closer look around in here. Here's a match, Mrs. Potts. I like the lantern. Uh, thanks, mister. There, that does it. You look at some ground. What is it, Toto? It looked like fight happened here. Great day! Here's Inky's head on the floor. Here's my hand. You know Inky's footprint? Yeah, Toto. That short, narrow footprint is his. Let me think him in trouble. Here are the footprints of two men, Toto. That's right. Inky Paul here. <gasps> two fellas carry him away. Oh, my sake, alive. Come on, Toto. We'll follow these tracks. Uh. Ma went along, holding the lantern, as the two men followed the footprints to the rear of Clyde Roscoe's cafe. They were about to open the cafe door when Tato noticed the tracks that led to the nearby shed. Investigating, they recognized the saddle horse inside. Tato said, Where's horse? That's right. Crack show him come here with other fella. Leave town in buckboard. I'll follow those wagon tracks. You go for the deputy marshal. And what we tell him? That Spence Burrow was in town. How tell him he's disappeared? Go to the deputy, these wagon tracks, and ask him to follow them. He's heavy. I'll see you later. Adios. Adios. by 
heavy underbrush, the Indian passed within a few feet of the shaft without being seen by the Lone Ranger. Then he heard Frank Burrow's voice. Hold your fire, Clyde. Oh, that's Get that masked man from here. We will not hit him unless he shows himself to shoot. All right, you stay here and keep firing your gun while I try to close in on the shaft. What? what do you mean, close in on it? I'll make my way through the brush until I can draw a beat on it. I can't eat, then you come up. But you better hit him with your first shot. Don't worry, I'll not miss. I waited too long to gun that critter. You two, drop guns, hey, Conroe. It's the engine. He's behind you. Drop guns, let me too. Oh, all right, my hands are up. I'll get that red. Oh, my arm. My arm. You shot him. You keep hands up. There, up. Don't shoot me. Give me a Yes, Conroe. Me got drop and cook. I'm over here with hands up. Oh, I'll go after Ringo. Oh, he's heavy. Time later, Prince Burrow and his friend were riding. Tato was in the driver's seat, while Inky, a striped scout, rode alongside with the Lone Ranger, keeping an eye on the prisoners. They were halfway to town when they met Ma Hank. The huge landlady was accompanied by Deputy Marshal Pete Morgan. Oh, 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 Mister, this here is Deputy Pete Morgan. Howdy, howdy, Marshal. Ma, how'd you know where to find us? We were following the wagon tracks. We have two prisoners for you, Deputy. So I see, mister. I know Clyde Roscoe, but who's the other fella? Thanks, Burl. He's wanted for robbery and murder. The two of them were going to kill me as well as the Lone Ranger and Tano. And I overheard him planning to get the gold Marshal Jim bring in the town. <laughs> Inky told all he knew about the two men. When they were safely behind bars in Modoc City's jail, Inky returned to the hotel stable with Ma Hank. After Puddenfoot was back in his stall, Inky said, I was hiding right over there when I overheard those crooks talking, Ma. If I hadn't sneezed, they'd never have captured me. Mm-hmm. I never figured a sneeze could start so much trouble. If you hadn't been in the stable, you wouldn't have gotten into trouble. Huh? What were you doing here? Well, I, I, I... Were you trying to saddle Homer's horse? Oh, Ma. Never mind, Dinky. I'll not scold you. In a way, you helped capture those polecats. Die. Just think, Ma. Hmm? I helped the Lone Ranger.
is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>